All right, I hope you saw the earlier video on the more on the electronics end of this. Now we're going to be looking at how to program an Arduino. Briefly, we got a 2.9 horsepower 100 volt motor salvaged out of a treadmill, a constant current source that controls power to this H-bridge circuit that controls motor direction, and we have an Arduino Nano with two switches and three optocoupler outputs. You notice it draws quite a lot of current when it first starts because it has to move that heavy steel flywheel. This motor came out of a treadmill, by the way. When it's finally fully spinning, it draws a little, uh, 0.58 amps. Let's reverse it. Let it slow down and stop. And let's hit the other switch. Notice something with the switch. When I press the switch, there's a delay before the direction. These two LEDs are controlling the direction through the H bridge. Now watch where the motor is barely moving. Let's switch polarity. You notice that when I, at this speed in particular, you notice that the minute that I, the, both LEDs will go off. When that happens, the H bridge is placed into the brake position. It st it'll stop the motor from spinning. If I press both switches, by the way, I turn the system off. All right, here's my Arduino Nano circuit. Brief to program it, we're going to be dealing with two direction switches. They do both direction and turn on and off power from the constant current source. We have a pulse width modulation speed control 10K pot through analog to digital converter zero. Two outputs control the H bridge direction and one output controls the power output and turns on and off the constant current source. Here is your constant current source. We've been over it. This pot sets it, this pot here sets your maximum current. Once we have that set, and in this case I set it for one and a half amps in this video, and uh, you cannot exceed that at 100% modulation. You only get about an amp and a half. That is it. That's all you're going to get. And from 0 to 100, you can control the current output, which controls motor speed. And finally, we use this H-bridge configuration. When both digital outputs from Arduino are turned off, these transistors are turned on, creating a braking setup, shunting the motor windings to ground, largely stopping the motor. All right, the programming for this circuit is fairly straightforward. We have pot defined as zero, that's your connected to analog to digital zero two push button switches PV1, PV2. They're connected to digital pins two and three as shown here. We have three outputs. One on pin nine is your pulse width modulation to your constant current source to control that. Then you have two pins, digital pin 11 and 10, that correspond with H bridge connection one and H bridge connection two. Here and here, and there's your pulse width modulation. Here we set um, the HB connections as output, the motor speed as an output, and we turn the out output optocouplers low. The two input push buttons, of course, are inputs. 
we use the pull-ups as shown here you can do uh, you can do a pin mode input write a high to it turns a pull up on it's the same thing as the input pull up command and now let's get to our main program all right let's start here in loop i have two if statements that are going to read the push button switches and based on the condition of those push button switches and these are both logical ands if push button one has been pressed that's digital read pb1 is equivalent to zero and the other is equivalent to one i'm going to do a motor speed zero power from the uh, constant current source assuming you have the control cut up high enough to supply power is turned off. The H bridge, HB1, HB2 are both low, is put into the braking mode to stop the motor. I'm going to delay 500 milliseconds or half second. Then I'm going to make HB1 high and HB2 low and let's just for argument's sake it's going to spin clockwise. Okay, our next condition I have released, uh, I'm not pressing push button one, but then I decide to push push button two. It returns a zero, and this is a one. The condition is met. Again, analog um, right is zero, turns the power off from the pulse width modulation. HB1, HB2 is low. Putting it again into the brake mode, stopping the motor, delaying 500 milliseconds. But this time, HB1 is going to be low and HB2 is going to be high, and it's going to go, for argument's sake, counterclockwise, opposite of what you had up here. Let's move down here. What if I push both switches? Okay, this doesn't matter with the switches yet. Let's stick with this. All right, I'm, de I'm reading the latch, HB1 and HB2. These are the actual outputs to the H-bridge optocouplers. If either one is high, what I'm going to do is do an analog read of the pot, divide by 4, and write that value for motor speed. That's from 0 to 255 which is 0 to 100% modulation. If both HB1 and HB2 are 0, then it's just going to turn off the power and do nothing. That's why when both of the LEDs, direction LEDs are off, there's no power. No pulse width modulation, nothing. Now, for the final sequence, if I press PB1, returns a 0, and press PB, PB2 and return to zero. It's going to put it immediately into the braking mode, delay a half a second, and exit. And this statement prior to it, reading no outputs to HB1 or HB2, is going to kill the power until such time that I come back up here and press one of these buttons. And that's all there is to it.